There you go, staircase to data. Maybe not heaven, but at least to data. And so what we have here is, right, we've, the red is the pressure, the blue is the temperature, right? We set the, te the pressure by adjusting the vent valve, allow the system to equilibrate, turn up the, the heat until we get a steady boil, and then eventually we'll get a nice steady temperature, boom, we measure the temperature. And we do this in about 10 kilopascal steps. And so we go all the way up till we get to around 100 kilopascals, a little bit higher, but not too high because we don't want this system to go super critical on us, right? We don't want to go much above atmosphere pressure. Tying this back to our, our PCAM lectures, right? We said, ah, right, a plot of LN pressure, what we just measured, divided by the standard state pressure, 100 kilopascal, versus 1 over T, the slope of that, right? This is a derivative of the slope that should be delta H over R uh, minus delta H over R, right? So if we take the slope times minus R, we should get delta H of vaporization for this system. All right, so what does that mean? Again, let's, let's help you with the data analysis here. So we're gonna have a plot, right, of measure the pressure of this system. We divide through by the standard pressure. Standard pressure, right, is just 100 kilopascals, right? And then we're gonna take the log of that, natural log it would be not we plot that versus one over t and of course we're doing that in kelvin the, the data came in, in in celsius we got to convert that to kelvin with one over that right? and what you're going to get is some of the finest data you've ever taken this one really works well you're going to get a nice straight line right if we fit that to a line and what we know is that minus r times the slope right, is equal to delta H. We're going to call that our experimental value of delta H. Right? Good. You get one of those for ethanol, you get one of those for uh, n -tech. Now, what we want to do, as always, is not only report that, we want to report the, the slope or the uncertainty. Oh, the uncertainty comes from the uncertainty of the slope, right? And so if we have the uncertainty of the slope, oh, to get the uncertainty in delta H, you're gonna have to multiply by R. So make sure you have an error analysis section that explains that you took the slope in Igor, you found the uncertainty in Igor, and then you had to multiply by R to get the uncertainty in delta H. Good. Then you go and you look up a value of the enthalpy of vaporization in the NIST white book, right? And you compare these two and you say, wow, this data was so good. Wait a second, why don't these two numbers agree? Well, one reason is we know now that the enthalpy, right, delta H, enthalpy change, is a function of temperature. And so, yes, it's linear over a small range, but actually there's a larger curve it really does change its shape a little bit. And so we measured it over a certain temperature range, and that's where our value pertains to, right? We have a, an upper temperature. We have a lower temperature. This is one of the two. And the place that our data is most appropriate for is right in the middle of this, right? So we have T experimental. It is in the middle. It's the average of the high temperature and the low temperature, okay? So our experimental value pertains to T experimental. But the one we looked up in the NIST web book, it's probably taken at some different temperature. And now what we should do is correct this to the same temperature so that we can compare apples to apples. We can compare delta H vaporization from the literature at the temperature of our experiment to the value that we took at this temperature. All right, how do we do that? How we do that, of course, we now know because we've done this in PCAM lecture as well, right? And that is that we have this correction factor right there, right? Okay, so 
delta H evaporization at some arbitrary temperature is equal to de delta H of vaporization at the literature, right, at the standard value. So you have to, in the NIST web book, you have to look up what temperature that value was taken at. Right? So make sure you get one where you know the temperature was taken at. And to correct it, we need this delta CP, delta T term. The delta CP part, that's just the heat capacity of the gas minus the heat capacity of the liquid. The delta T, that's the difference between the experimental temperature, the middle of your range, right? and the literature temperature, the one where this value was taken. And now what that allows you to do is create a literature value appropriate to your experimental temperature. And then you're gonna put this all in a nice table, right, and compare, compare your results for these two liquids to the results from uh, the Miss Wet book corrected for temperature appropriate. We also need to, Get rid of our sample, how do we do that? Right. You can't get this apart right now, right? If we want to change samples right now, this is under vacuum, right? And so don't forget that if you're under vacuum, right, then the atmosphere is pushing on this thing and it's holding the thing together. So you can't get it apart very easily. Besides, you don't want to like rip off the, the um, thermistor here and have a big inrush, okay? So instead, you gently vent it up. Gently vent it up to um, atmosphere. That will get all of this up to atmospheric pressure. And that way we can then take this apart. Right? We can already take the heat mantle off of here. All right? So that that cools down. This is open while oh, that's hot. We're allowing that to cool down now as we vent to atmosphere. Right now it's being held together because we got the little clamp on there, little clip on there. Put this back up to atmosphere. is isn't sishing anymore, so it's not leaking, right? So that means both we can get the thermistor off of there, we can turn off the water, right? And take off the little clip. Yeah, little clip. So, and then we're able to just twist that, boom. Get it off of here. And then we've got the ethanol of our handy dandy little thing. We will dispose of that appropriately. Right, the ethanol can actually go down the sink. The and heptane, of course, can't. That will have to go into a proper waste uh, container. And heptane goes in with non chlorinated solvents to keep your polar solvents away from your non polar solvents, right? So all of our organics go into one waste bin, our, our aqueous waste go into separate waste bin, right? This, um, since there's nothing else in it for alcohol, it can go down the sink, right? But we don't want to throw the boiling chips down the sink, so let's just be careful. Right? right? And then that way we've got this all taken apart. We uh, just need to drain the uh, condenser. Boom. And you will see. There it goes. Oh, it's a cool one on this one. Because it's got the little one. Okay, so that way we can get rid of uh, the water out of there. It's all uh, going to be cleaned up. We need to pump off. But the last thing that we want to do is vacuum systems like to be under vacuum. So what we'll do is after we dispose of the ethanol appropriately and uh, have this cleaned out, don't leave the uh, the boiling chips in there so we get it all cleaned out like that. Ethanol leaves it nice and, and clean by itself so we don't have to wash it any more than that. Okay? Um, then we're going to hook this back up and pump it down. Vacuum systems like to be under vacuum. That'll help clean out the whole system and keep it clean. All right, so there you go. That is the determination of the entropy of vaporization of the equilibrium vapor.